everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Industrial Packaging Podcast with me, your host, Digital Marketing Specialist at Industrial Packaging, Nathan Duby. On today's episode, we have special guest, Connor Delaney, Member Success Manager at Impact, which, in my humble opinion, is one of the greatest marketing agencies in the world. Uh, so, Connor, how are you doing? Thanks, Nate. Super excited to be here and to, uh, to talk packaging. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, we've got a lot to discuss today, so let's jump into the first question, which is, Connor, can you tell us a bit about yourself and your role at Impact? Absolutely. So I started at Impact back in 2019 as a content trainer, and over the years, my roles developed and changed, and currently, as you mentioned, I am the member success manager for our online learning community, Impact Plus, um, which is really, it's it's a platform built to help. It has courses, it has events, it has community forums, mastermind groups, but it's really meant to allow members, and this is you know part of why you use the platform too, it allows you to have kind of this on-demand learning experience. Um, and I help make sure, as my title suggests, that our members are not only enjoying the platform, but are succeeding in implementing what they learn in the platform too. Awesome. That's fantastic. And yes, I am a member of Impact Plus. Uh, to my listeners, if uh, you work in a marketing department, I highly suggest checking it out. It's a fantastic social community. There's lots of great free content uh, in courses. Um, so that being said, Connor, where can people find you on the web? Yeah, you know, I'm. if you're looking to connect with me business-wise, I would say either Impact Plus, again, not to do an ad in there, but Impact Plus, <laughs> no but um, LinkedIn, LinkedIn is probably the best place to find me. It's somewhere that not only do I enjoy the content on there, but um, just a really great way for, for people to message me, for me to interact with content. You know, I like to be someone that no one can, there's no one that I can't connect with and want to not connect with um, because there's always some, some connection to be made there. So um, I'd say LinkedIn is probably the best bet there. Awesome. Great place to connect. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, LinkedIn as well. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, today's uh, guest, Connor, is here as part of what I'm going to call the Consumer Connection Series. Uh, Connor doesn't work in the packaging industry, and he doesn't work for a company that packages physical products. Uh, but I wanted him to come on the show uh, as part of the series as a consumer so that we can discuss how packaging impacts his life. Uh, so from there, we can go to the next question, which is, how would you describe your relationship to product packaging as a consumer? You know, I'm a pretty simple person when it comes to packaging like I don't I don't look for flashy or fancy packaging or what you may call like the wow factor but it's something that I definitely notice when it comes to packaging like I I appreciate when thought has been put into packaging and I think a lot of consumers would relate to that that it's easy to kind of meet the bare minimum when it comes to packaging and there's a lot of organizations who will do so just to whether it be cost efficient or um, they just may not care. But I think for many consumers nowadays, they like to feel like their purchase was meaningful. And for me, I look for I look for someone who made an intention with their packaging. And beyond that, it's something that will stick with me when I go to make a purchase later on when I say I had such a wow experience when I unwrapped this thing, when I opened this box, whatever it was, even when I picked up the box in my, you know, in the mail room or whatever. Um, that's, that's what I look for in packaging is someone who does it intentionally, who, who aims to make it kind of this moment versus just, oh, let me just pick it up, throw it on my shoulder and, and move on. Awesome. Uh, you know, and I, I totally agree with your sentiment. And it's interesting because I was talking to my marketing manager on the episode that will be published this week. Uh, this episode we're doing now will be published next Friday, most likely. But on the previous episode, um, I was discussing packaging as an extension of the marketing department for um, companies in general. And it's interesting because some companies don't put a lot of thought into it and other companies absolutely knock it out of the park and understand the value of good packaging um, for their products. And, you know, that can be something as simple as choosing the right color combinations and typography that resonates with your ideal buyers, uh, all the way up to these new interactive experiences that we're only seeing very recently, such as augmented reality packaging uh, that Pizza Hut has done, and another brand would be 19 Crimes Wine. Uh, if you scan the label, there's a picture, a black and white picture uh, of a, a criminal who lived in the 1800s, and it actually comes to life and speaks to you three-dimensionally through this app on your phone, and it talks to you. And I think that's an interesting uh, thing to mention in context of this conversation because uh, the company had excessive revenue growth uh, in a short period of time after that. So 
coming from your perspective, it's interesting because uh, it's good to hear from consumers what their relationship actually is. Because I think it's, you know, like you said, it's not like you hyper focus on it, but you do notice when there is good packaging versus bad. Would you agree with that? Yeah, 100%. And, you know, I... And bad packaging can mean so many different things for me too. Like one thing that like, if it's just thrown together, you know, we had an experience recently, um, my girlfriend and I, where we, we bought something, I think it was from like target. I hate to name names, but we'll use target for the example. I, and, and there wasn't any, you know, protective packaging around it. They just threw the product in a box and shipped it to us. And the thing was cracked in like four different places. And like, that clearly tells me that packaging wasn't wasn't a high priority for them, but like, am I going to go, I'm not going to order online from them again. Like it just, it doesn't leave a good, good feeling for me. Um, and it impacts my buying experience to your point of it, influencing marketing. Like it's the whole, you know, marketing to service experience that that whole thing contributes to the sales process there. If, if I buy it and it's easy to buy online, but then it comes and half of it's broken, why am I going to want to buy from you again if I don't trust you again? It's all that's that whole process really matters. And packaging is a huge part of that. And it's something that I hadn't really thought a ton about before. But when you reached out, it made me realize like how much I actually do probably subconsciously think about the packaging experience that I have when I purchase products online. Awesome. Yeah. And that is important. I mean, in the age of Amazon, there's so many uh, packages being shipped all over the world these days. And uh, some companies, uh, like you say, just throw a product in a box and there's no protective packaging. And it's it's not like that's rocket science. Like there's these products called air pillows. They're little plastic pouches that are filled with air and they prevent you know cracks and damage. And it's very simple to put that in. So it's interesting uh, that you know the, one of the first things that comes to mind was a negative experience. And I think that's important for our listeners because obviously you don't want to have a bad unboxing experience. It's one of the worst things you can do uh, to a new consumer. So I appreciate your feedback in that respect. Uh, but from here, let's go on to the next question, which is what is one thing that you love about your favorite brand's packaging? Awesome question. And I was really excited about this one because I'm going to – take two, if you don't mind, I'm going to take two different things that I like about it. Um, sure. I love when packaging has personality and I love when packaging is easy to open. When I say personality, it's, it's taking it a little, a little bit beyond the brown box. I guess you could say it adds a little pizzazz. You know, there's, there's certain boxes where like you have those subscription boxes you get sent every month. Those are going to have a really unique personality. They're going to probably be branded. They're going to have a bunch of different stuff connected. But for for me, you know, there's a there's an apparel company and and for those listening, I'm a big hat guy. I have a collection of like 40 or 50 of them and it's growing in a way that's probably not super healthy, but I just I enjoy it. It's one of those things that, you know, you go to a location and you want to buy a hat versus a shirt versus a pin, whatever. I'm a hat guy. But there's a brand called Relentless Betrayal and I got a hat from them and I actually kept the box. It was that cool and unique. And it was a regular box, something, you know, similar to like a shoe box, but it had this unique design branding along it. And I'm sure that they invested a little bit of time in it, but even inside they'd uniquely packaged the hat in a way where it showcased the, the bill and the main, the front of the hat versus just kind of like stuffing it in a box. It showcased it and packaged it in a way where I felt like, wow, that was cool. Like it felt like a, you know, you watch those unboxing videos on YouTube. It felt like I was immersed in this moment where I could open this box. And, you know, you hear about like Apple's packaging and everything where like everything is done intentionally. And this felt like it was done intentionally. And I've since bought shirts from them. I bought another hat from them. It's made me realize that the brand is exciting. Um, and and again, it, it influenced my experience and it was cool. Like it was just, it was something that I looked forward to doing again when I got the next one. The, the easy to open side is probably really, really fundamental and really basic, but I cannot stand when I have to tear open bags or untangle wires. And sure, I get that there's certain, you know, safety requirements for some of these packages, but I can't stand when it's, it feels like I have to solve a puzzle in order to open a package. Like I want it to be as simple and easy for that user experience as possible. And so when I when I have an experience that's just like, oh, I pulled it out of the box, everything looked great, it felt safe and secure, I, I'll remember that too. And I'll also just acknowledge that, hey, they did this better than someone else potentially as well. 
Awesome. You know, that's great feedback. And you kind of seg right into the next question, which is what is one thing you hate about packaging? And, um, you know, that segues into the following one as well, which is have you ever experienced rap rage, which is getting angry at packaging that is hard to open? It sounds like the answer to that question for you would be yes. You have, in fact, experienced rap rage in the past. Definitely, definitely. You know, I hate when it not only when packages aren't easy to open, but when they feel overly complicated. You know, there's there's things like those little like tear slits that you put in it where it's like tear here. You know, when there's packages that just don't have that and it's just like I have to go find a pair of scissors to go open it and all this other stuff. And again, I sound like I'm some like spoiled brat, but also like from a buyer's experience, like I think that it's such an easy thing nowadays. Um, again, speaking from someone who's not in a packaging background, um, but like, my goodness, I'm not like a violent person, but like when it's overly complicated and I have to be ripping bags and trying to do all these things or opening gears and whatever, it's just like, if you want to get my head going, that's the way to do it. And you know, it's when it feels like I have to rip a phone book open to get your, to get your package open. That's not a fun experience, but yes, to your rap rage point. I definitely go through this. And again, I'm not like an angry person. I'm usually pretty like go with the flow. Um, but if there's, you know, two or three things that really bother me in life, it's when it's hard to open a package, when I'm in traffic, and when I don't get my way sometimes, which sounds, again, spoiled. But, um, you know, I had an experience recently, and, and I hope you don't, this is super funny, but it just, it rang true because it happened like two days ago. Um, yeah, go I was it. trying to open a bag of tortellini for dinner, and I had one of those moments where it was wrapped up in some interesting packaging, one that I hadn't really seen before, but it was so difficult to open. And you know that moment where you're like, you're pulling it as hard as you can, and it's like about to explode. Like I hit that point where it was like, I'm pulling this so hard, and it's so wrapped in a way that I feel like is unnecessary that, you know, I had to put it on the table for a moment and just like, one, gather my breath, but also then I had to go find scissors to go open it. And it was like, I wanted this to be an easy dinner that I could make for myself while, you know, I was just hanging out. And the fact that it took so much effort, I was like, why, why is this so difficult? And then why is it bothering me? And it made me realize that like, unconsciously, the packaging is bothering me here. Um, so yes, rap rage is, is a hundred percent, not only real, but something that I experience more often than I'd like to admit. Well, that's good feedback for our listeners. So to those who are listening to this episode, ladies and gentlemen, please make your packaging easy to open. Um, we live in a world where uh, rap rage has become front and center. I mean, there are celebrities who've made unboxing videos where they literally freak out because it's too hard to open. And we are seeing um, a fair amount of companies packaging in a more simple, straightforward, user-friendly way. But there's still a lot of companies who uh, sort of rest on their laurels, like companies who've been around for 100 years that, you know, maybe it's time for a redesign or something because it is hard to open. And um, I think it's very important uh, that we consider the unboxing experience because if you order something offline from a new brand, uh, it's literally uh, your second or third interaction with that brand. And if it, you know, becomes this tumultuous, uh, borderline traumatic experience, you're not going to want to purchase um, products from that company again. So thank you for your feedback. I appreciate that, Connor. Totally. All right. Uh, so the next question is, would you be willing to pay more for a product if it has easy to open packaging? Yes. Um, and I actually, I have an example for this too. Um, so I moved to a new apartment in just south of Boston uh, earlier last year, nice. and I was buying a new bed frame, and I was doing a ton of research on different bed frames and everything, and you know, that can be like a nightmare to have to like put together your bed, to drill everything together, oh, and, yeah. and I found this brand, and again, I feel like I'm plugging a lot of brands, but this is good for people who want to find good packaging Great. examples. Totally. Um, there's, there's this brand called Thuma, and the brand uses this packaging style and even just the build style where there's one screw in the entire put-together process. The rest of it, it actually, like, locks into itself just the way that it's built. You know, the legs lock into the edge of the frame. Everything comes together really easily. And the packaging had 
like a really cool personality to it. It had little notes when you would take out certain aspects of it. So you take out, you know, the headboard and it has a note of like, this is a great place for you to lay back after a long day of work. And it had like little images and everything and everything just felt really put together. Um, and just, it made me excited, like these little notes of excitement as it went along. But then when it was all put together, there's like a final note, um, when you have to drill in the one screw and they said, we did our best, but one screw was required. And it was like, just like a cool little thing um, that made me acknowledge it. But I also paid, I think probably 15 or 20% more than I probably would have paid on a regular bed frame. Because one, I heard the experience was great. The packaging was super easy. And, and it just, it made it really smooth for someone who's moving into their first apartment, who wants to get everything set up as quickly as possible and wants to reduce the amount of stuff that I have laying around. You know, I don't want to have, it's, you know, those like Ikea pictures, we have like a hundred things laid out on the ground. This was like a 10 piece build. It had one box and it was just, it was super duper simple. So definitely makes, makes a difference for me. And when I know that it's going to be that kind of experience, I'll absolutely pay for that experience. That is fantastic. Thank you, Connor. Everybody, keep that in mind. Think about that. 20% more, I mean, that is a significant purchase to make. Uh, and obviously, uh, consumers are looking for these types of experiences. Uh, moving on from there, this is a big one. Uh, this is a hot button topic. It has been for at least the past five years, and it seems it becomes closer and closer to one of the number one issues in the packaging industry. And uh, so the question is, how important is sustainability in regard to product packaging to you as a consumer? You know, I haven't seen a ton of brands that specifically say like our packaging is sustainable, but I do go out and look for brands that use sustainable materials throughout their, per like throughout their product experience, throughout their whole you know, even their mission as an organization, I will seek that out. And there's a there's a sweatpants brand that I love called Ten Tree, and they're all about sustainability and rebuilding forests. And again, I'm not trying to make some like statement, but like what's great about them is that they say like their entire process is focused around sustainability and supporting the environment. And I'll look for that. You know, it won't be it won't always be like my my differentiator in purchasing it. But if it's there, I will absolutely keep it and put it into account um, as I'm making that ex or making that purchasing experience. So I'd say it's more so for me about, do you tell the right story where sustainability kind of lives throughout your entire organization? Because if it's just the packaging and then you're, you know, pumping fumes into the, into the sky, like nobody's business, then... <laughs> Yeah, I might not. It might not matter as much to me that you say you have sustainable packaging, but if your business is built around a kind of focus of sustainability, then yeah, absolutely, it plays a part, and I will I will consider it because when when I get a cool package, and I can't think of an example, but I've certainly had one where I got a I got a delivery of a box, and they said keep this box for later, and you can use it for this, or they give you like alternative uses where you could use it around your apartment, use it in giving a gift to somebody when they find ways even to like reuse their existing packaging in a way like that's pretty cool as well. And I wish I had an example of that. But it's, it's just again, thinking about that entire experience as a consumer, when I'm told like, you can use this box, or maybe where this box came from, same idea, or wait, maybe where all these materials came from. Like that's a really next step experience that I don't think would cost a lot, but could go a long way for consumers. Awesome. What a fantastic answer. Um, you know, and it's interesting that you point out you're concerned about the overall sustainability of the company. And if packaging uh, from a sustainability standpoint is being used, but it's not part of the core culture of the business itself, that that can be a turnoff. I think that's uh, an incredible answer to that question. And I think that's very valuable to our listeners. So I thank you for saying that. And that kind of rolls right into the next question, which is, are you willing to pay more for a product if it has sustainable packaging? Or let's take that a little bit further. Uh, if the company that you're purchasing from has sustainability as a central focus. I would, I would, you know, again, I, for me, it's not like the make or break factor, I guess you could say. I, I don't, I don't go out of my way to look for sustainable companies, but when they make it clear that that's, that that's actually part of what they they work towards, what they care about. Yeah, I'll absolutely 
at least it, it will make me feel better about making a more expensive purchasing decision, and it will certainly factor in. Awesome. Uh, I really appreciate that. That's uh, excellent feedback. Um, the next question is, can you tell us a story about a product's packaging that really drove you to purchase the item? So not necessarily something that, you know, you went online and you're like, oh, I love this shirt. I'm going to buy this or this brand. I bought a, you know, hundred hats from them before. So I'm, I'm going to go do this. Like, have you ever walked into a gas station or a supermarket or a department store, some other retail space, uh, and came out with a product you didn't intend to buy because the packaging caught your eye? Oh goodness! Now you're gonna you're gonna get me in trouble that I'm making all these spontaneous purchases. Um, but I do I do have one actually. I um we so I'm a big like board game person. You know if I can if I can find a game that I really like, I will play a a board game more than often than not. Um, and there's this game called Parks that I found. I think it was in like Target or it was in you know a a larger retail store. Um, but this game called Parks, one, the packaging was beautiful. Like it stood out in the in that section and it just, it I, it caught my eye. I'm also someone who's a big hiker. So you think about a park in like a national park. I'm like, yeah, that's obviously going to catch my eye. But what amazed me about it was it was, it was beautiful packaging. The more that I read about it, it told this really cool story on the box itself where it walked us through, you know, how the game was created, but also like how the art style came about. It's the, the game is created by, um, I think it's upwards of 50 different small, consider it small town, but like smaller following, um, like digital artists where they, they just create this, they put it on Etsy and whatever, and they all came together to create this game called Parks and it's a strategy game. And what was even cooler was like, okay, so I get this whole story and I'm pretty bought in. And then there's a QR code on the outside that says like, see how this game works. And it's this video that walks you through it, but it actually was like a consumer opening. It was like a compilation of consumers opening up the box and walking through what they see. And I, from what I saw, obviously it was wrapped up, so I couldn't open it in the store itself. But what I saw was like every part of the, like the entire game fit in a certain way in the box for it all to sit together and maximize the space. There was always a spot for everything. It was really compact. It was easy to put together. And it walked through exactly how they went about the packaging experience too, which I was just like, what company is taking the time to put this together? And so when I bought it and I brought it home, uh, we opened it up and everything is like perfectly packed. Again, this box is, not, I don't know, not even the, size of a piece of paper like it's it's probably like a eight by eight box and wow. and you open it up and like every little bit is in the exact same spot and it's labeled in a way that's really easy to recognize and it's kind of made for everybody and then repacking it and you know i don't want to get ahead of myself because i do think that this is something that's that's really stood out to me recently but like being able to put it back together it's not like you know chuck all the pieces in a box but like they make it so simple for you to put it back the way that it was and this is a game that I now tell everyone about because I'm like, it's beautiful. It's really fun. It's a strategy game. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes to play and you can play with like a bunch of people. And it's just, I, the whole experience of it from start to finish was just like, I was amazed at how much attention was put into either before you open it or as soon as you open it, you see how organized and fluid it was. And it just, it felt easy to play. And that's why I find myself playing it a lot. That's fantastic. That has to be the best review uh, of a product and its packaging that I've ever heard. And I've watched quite a few being in the industry. And I got to say, <laughs> uh, I love, love, love the QR code scanning that leads to a video of unboxing. Uh, that is absolutely genius because, you know, um, when playing tabletop games, whether it be Parks or Dungeons and Dragons or, you know, what have you, uh, some boxes are packaged better than others. Uh, and it's just incredible that you were able to see on your digital device the unboxing experience so you could decide if, you know, is this something that I really want? And I think that is incredibly unique because there are some companies out there doing that, but there are very few and it's shocking because interactive packaging has proven with numbers to increase revenue. So if you're packaging board games uh, or toys or things of that, uh, take a lesson from Parks, guys, because this is the future and uh, providing interactive experiences and storytelling, the other big thing, uh, that Connor said, these are the things that are going to help you to connect with other human beings who are passionate bit about the products that you're buying. And before we, before we jump in, we'll have one more thing there. And it's like, there's the, the feeling of 
what you need when you walked in. And, you know, your question was, was a great tee up for this, that um, I walked out with something I didn't intend to buy. I was just walking around looking for something. And the need that I was trying to fulfill was I need a game that I can play with my friends, a tabletop game I need for my friends. But the one that I wanted that I was actually ended up buying this game for was I want a game that's easy for me to take out, play and put back because I can think of so many that I have right now that it's like I have to find all the pieces because it's under the board or it might have fallen out of the box. But like the game is just packaged up in such a way where it met my unconscious once as well as the need of a game. Um, and I think I think that kind of thinking for any brand, whether, you know, board games maybe adds a simple example, but for any brand, if they're thinking about that experience of their need is this, but their want or desire is that, how can we address both of them is a really strong approach to to effective packaging and effective customer experience as a whole. 100%. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you listen to that. If you didn't go back uh, and replay that, that is, this is such important, great ideas coming from uh, a consumer, you know, potentially one of your customers in the future. So take note of this, folks. Uh, moving forward to the last question is, what is one thing that you wish that companies knew when it comes to packaging for their products? You know, it it kind of, it's it's similar to what I just mentioned with Parks, but the ability to, to think about repackaging your products. You know, you mentioned Amazon earlier. The amount of buying and re and like returning that happens for consumers nowadays is significantly more. You know, I can even speak for myself who doesn't buy a ton of stuff online. I'm definitely the old school kind of, I'll buy stuff online when it's easy, but if I have the opportunity to go out and like actually interact with something, I typically will. But yeah. when I buy something online, I want to have the ability to say, you know what? I wasn't a hundred percent satisfied with this. I'm going to send it back and not have to scramble for a box or worry that like I need certain packaging or have to go buy certain materials. You know, not that happens all the time, but I think that a lot of brands don't think enough about if this person has to repackage this, is it just as easy to pack it back up and send it back to us as it was for us to send it to them. And I know that that can be asking a lot as a consumer, like reaching out to brands to do this, but not having the ability to mail something back and be satisfied with that experience. Again, it's part of like when you request a refund from, you know, I work in member success. We have a subscription platform for Impact Plus. Like when I can create a great experience for someone who requests a refund or is looking to cancel, whatever it might be, that's still a good experience for us as the company to be fulfilling something that we may not want to have happen, but we now know that we're not losing a customer because of a, a less than optimal experience. So for brands, when I think about it, I want to be satisfied that when I receive this package, I don't have to tear a bunch of stuff up. You know, certain things, again, it's inevitable, but there's ways for brands to be more creative with this where if I can then repackage it and send it back, I'm thinking, you know what? It just didn't work out for me this time, but I would still look at them if the the opportunity came around versus it was a nightmare to send back. I wasn't happy with the experience. It leaves this negative taste in your mouth that I, I don't think is fair to the brand, but I also think that the brand has more control than maybe they give themselves credit for. Yeah, that's excellent. You know, it's funny when you say that, um, you know, it's an, it's quote unquote, a negative experience as the brand to get a return or an unhappy customer, but to make that a positive experience absolutely uh, does drive some consumers to give you a second chance. And I mean, that's worth its weight in gold. Uh, it's interesting when you said that the first thing that I thought of was at the 2019 inbound show, I remember Brian Halligan was talking about uh, a new brand, a disruptive car brand called Carvana, rather than going into, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to speak to a salesman, which I, I don't know about you, I'm never really looking forward to that experience. And I actually like my dealership, but Not I often. still don't like doing it. Uh, Carvana, you know, you go online, <clears throat> you can order a car, they'll drop it off at your house, you can drive it for a week. And if you don't like it, you can return it. Uh, and their business model is going through the roof. They're blowing away the majority uh, of car sellers who sell through dealerships. Um, so that's just another example of why it's so important to make returning the product a enjoyable experience. So thank you for that, Connor. Totally. And it makes for good reviews too, you know, like I can actually think of uh, a couple of examples where 
I've read reviews about people that said like their service was great to work with. I ended up not wanting it, but they made it so easy for me that I still recommend them. Like that kind of experience when you can, when you can applaud their service is such a, a great example of every opportunity in your, from the start of talking to this prospect or lead or potential customer to them making that purchasing decision. It's all comes back to creating a really positive overall experience. And I, again, like I look at reviews for a lot of things. If I see a review that says their service was easy to work with, I feel less threatened to make that purchase as well. And again, packaging is all part of that too. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Well, that was the last question. So I want to thank you for coming on the show today, Connor. Thank you so much for having me, Nate. This was a really fun conversation, a really unique look at, uh, at the influence packaging can have. 100%. And I just, you know, I think your answers are worth their weight in gold. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that does it for another episode of the Industrial Packaging Podcast with me, your host, Nathan Doobie, Digital Marketing Specialist at Industrial Packaging. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and I hope you'll tune in for the next one. But until then, I hope you have a great day, and we'll see you next time.